to a point, in fact, whereby we agreed with Fairview to allow access from their site into uh, the, the Colonel Business Centre site, uh, which enables that site to come forward uh, um, more readily. So um, we're quite pleased that we've been able to get two key landowners working together to potentially provide for a more comprehensive development in this area. It just might be worth me showing you on the plan where, where I mean. So this is the this is a fairly proposal, of course. That is the name we come to this listen to use. The idea is we will allow access, maybe we'll allow access into that Colonel Business Centre, round that back, enabling that frontage to be better developed because I think it's going to be extraordinarily difficult to get another access off Colonel Avenue. So now we site, as you can see, it's simply that building. So what we've been able to do is work with um, that, the owner of the, the Business Centre to bring forward uh, um, possible redevelopment that will be brought to the committee in due course that we think will fit in comfortably with uh, the Fairview scheme. And that you know, essentially will release what is currently a fairly unattractive building for both residential and business uses. The intention is the owner of the business centre wants to retain most of his employment uses within a, a new block. So that's very encouraging because uh, that is a key, uh, a key local employee, uh, employer. Um, so, so we're pleased to be able to sort of effectively bring forward those types of range of new, new buildings and uses together. I look further to add the report. Um, clearly, we can answer any questions you may have after we hear the speakers. So, I think it's probably best that we uh, call that up now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brian Turner. In principle, I am fully in favour of the newspaper library being pulled down. I am actually facing it from Fletcher Court on the pulse. I am totally against it going up 11 floors. We all bought our flats off plan. There was no searches present of three years ago to have 11 floors looking down on a newly built block. It will be affecting a lot of our sunlight and unfortunately there are not enough other speakers from Fletcher Court on the Pulse available to speak because a lot of them are tenants. Myself and my next door neighbour are going to be greatly affected by our morning sunlight. We understand the building is not suitable for future uh, use as a commercial unit and I would really stress that also the effect on traffic on Collindale Avenue will be greatly increased but our main proposal um, against it is the fact that they're going up 11 floors there is no need whatsoever if it was all the same height as the pulse development in the front, that'd be fine. Next no place here. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Mr. Turner? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, how far is the pulse away from the business centre? It's, uh, no, it's opposite the newspaper. We're talking about the newspaper library. Oh, sorry. Okay. We're right opposite there. I can actually see it facing it from my windows. <laughs> <laughs> and the 11th floor, I actually, where that, uh, I'm literally in the corner, right where that red light is now, and the 11th floors are going to be looking directly down on our block, which is only four storeys high. All our morning sunlight is going to be greatly affected. We're not going to have more sunlight. Okay. Any other questions? No. No, thank you.
while they're joining in London as a quantity of six, called in our Avenue. Um, thank you for allowing us to speak. The reason we requested to speak this evening was to inform members of our support for the Parliament. <coughs> members will be aware that we originally objected to the Parliament, and um, this is because the proposals had a significant impact on the development of the College of Business Centre's site, which is subject to a separate planning application for each development. This was because both schemes came forward together and had been designed in close proximity to the, to the land boundary. However, following extensive consultations and discussions with both Fairview and officers of the Council, we have now reached a solution to resolve the development constraints between both sides and to enable both developments to come forward. Our client has agreed to amend their current scheme to set the development back from the site boundary, which will require a new planning application, and this will come forward shortly. In return, Fairview has agreed to provide access to the College of Business Centre site to both developments between blocks B and C. And this was to offset some of the concessions we made within our own design. Um, this access road will also have the advantage of creating a pedestrian linkage across the site and into the road work scheme to improve pedestrian permeability and the public ground for the local community. This access will be secured through a section 106 agreement and through a separate commercial agreement between the landowners. We consider that this will optimise the development across both sides and will deliver a comprehensive development along the Collindale Avenue, which will contribute to the ongoing regeneration of the area. The scheme collectively will also deliver much needed housing, employment opportunities and local services in the area. We hope members are able to support the application and grant planning permission this evening. This in turn will facilitate the future development of the Collindale Business Centre site to enable both sites to come forward on a planned and coherent basis in line with the aspirations of the Collindale Action Plan. Hey, thanks. Uh, can I just interrupt you there? I think we are here in front of us to decide uh, a, an application for Fairview Homes on the British Library newspaper. We're not here to decide on the business part, and, and what you did just now has promoted that. Um, well, I, okay, I'll, I'll clarify. I am here purely to support the Fairview planning application. It's, it's because it is entwined by a head of term within the Section 106 yeah. agreement that it is paramount for us to also give support to that element of that scheme because it will affect our future planning application. Um, Thank you very much. Any questions? No, thank you. I hope I have a question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have you any objections to the 11th floors in the application. Well, the lady's not a resident. Not speaking to you. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, we, we really support the scheme. You would support the scheme. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't being rude, madam. Sounds like you can be. This is all. Sustainable location. 
But I think if you ask the residents, most of them would be very much uh, in contradiction of that view. The point about it is that Collingdale, this part of Collingdale, is suffering from massive urban development. You're turning what is suburban Collingdale into Canary Wharf Mark II, with these huge developments uh, of, of great height. And the fact is that the local infrastructure can't support the scale that you are developing in Collingdale, of which this is just one more part of the population more than doubling in terms of 37,000, maybe 38,000 people in just a few years' time. The roads can't cope, the NHS can't cope, the tube station can't cope, the buses can't cope, and the drains can't cope. We already have localised flooding in Oregon Road, and only today I had an email from somebody complaining about flooding further down the silt stream in Bristol. <coughs> The fact is that this will increase flood risk because of the lack of uh, reduction of runoff areas uh, as a result of this. Now, I wanted to comment on the affordable housing section of the report. We now know that it's said to be 23%. Well, actually, it does not equate to very many properties. Only, only I think it's 91, of which only 58 are for an affordable rate. And of course, affordable rate means 80% of market rate, which is not affordable to most people. So I, I, I suspect that we're not going to see many ordinary people from Collingdale in desperate housing need who are going to into any of these properties. However, it's not possible for us to test whether that is a fair assessment and fair proportion or not. Bear in mind that the starting point should be 40% according to the mayor's London target. So we can't assess this because you refuse to publish a liability document. You simply have to say your word that this is uh, what is viable and what is not. Now I think that is not fair on the community we should be in a position to objectively assess whether or not this is a viable option. I think one of the real concerns residents have is over car park. Already, we see huge pressure on residential streets. And I know in the report there's chicken feet set aside by way of section 106 for a, for a contribution towards the city people that control parking scheme. But that is nowhere near enough. I would like to know whether you're going to require the uh, developers here to make sure that they do not charge people who want a parking space to develop more than what you charge a residence per what the tens of thousands of pounds we've seen them charging elsewhere. We know that the GPs are already oversubscribed. There is no provision for more GP services here. Uh, and as far as I can see, there isn't, other than long-standing discussions, a provision for that for any of these extra 20,000 of people coming. You mentioned the point about um, uh, infrastructure as far as TV areas are concerned. One point I think I would make here, and I think it's a more general point for planning in the environment, is that you ignore the importance of making sure new developments are connected to broadband. There should be a requirement to make sure that all new developments are connected to broadband, unlike, for example, more for Road, right, where there's a huge development there with no broadband connection. I also think it's important you look at the jobs issue here, releasing skilled jobs here, uh, and there is no provision for replacement personal jobs. This should be a light industrial, a high tech starter, not this ridiculous, huge scheme. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. Councillor Green. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I said that you thought, well, effectively said that you thought this was far too big, far too massive for the area. Um, is it the 11 storey blocks, or are you objecting to the whole scheme as being too big? Well, I think it's both. I mean, first of all, I think 11 storeys is too high, as we've already heard from residents across the road. They've been taking some effects on that. At the moment, we have a view, although, although somewhat obstructed, we're going to go to the end uh, part, and now it's all just opposing, or not quite as far, uh, towards Dunbar uh, uh, Lovely. Uh, but I think that this is too high, the bulk is too great, and it's simply too much for this area. We've seen huge developments in Colorado, mm -hmm. both have got a pulse, we've got a lot, uh, the, the, uh, the site next to it, we've got another main line, that's what it's called, we've got the Zenith House, we, we, I suppose we'll, we'll soon be seeing an application in for uh, the Public Health laboratory if they would be which they're planning to do. So we can come out you cannot cope with this. We've got the Peel Centre, which has now got over a thousand more properties going forward than originally intended. In the end, there has to be a limit. Enough has to be enough. And in the end, I think that people of Collingdale have seen their area change beyond all recognition. There is no thought given to the needs of existing residents. Even the new residents are now complaining about what's going on. Never mind the long standing residents in Booth Road or, or, or the neighbouring streets uh, in our case. <coughs> 
one or another, and you're understanding that you are appalling the facts about these things. But the party may check something because it's a joke, and the council can do nothing about it. But there are facts about people who are parking from all the only states in Asia, exactly, because the developers charge up to ten thousand pounds for parking space. So inevitably, people go for parking in my roads, which is not fair on the on those residents. So that's why I said, at the very least, you should have a parking condition here, requiring those, those developers not to charge excessively for parking places. They should charge the same to see these Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just, thank you very much, Andrew. I mean, this viability, these very secret viability reports. I mean, we went through a planning course recently, and um, planning officer from, I think it was Westminster, said that they were challenging. With you know, with you and your other colleagues in, in GA, I mean, are they having this problem with these secret viability reports in other boroughs, to, to the best of your knowledge? Well, I don't see it in other boroughs. I mean, obviously, I do with Camden as well. Yeah. Uh, we don't have this problem with Camden. No, Camden have got much more progressive attitudes to it. And uh, I, I, I just don't understand the secrecy that's going on. I think we should be able to test these things. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Desmond. Thank you. Um, Councillor Jill Sargent. No, she said another. No, she said no, this one as well. Yes. Oh. She asked to speak on this one as well. She's in the Yes, I know. Do you have down for the other one? Yes, and that one as well. Of course, not. Yes, it's all right. It's all right. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, and thank you for allowing me to speak. And before I begin, I must say I would like to thank Fairview for trying to involve us in a very extensive consultation. However, I'm very pleased as well that they've satisfied the requirements of what Collingdale Business Park, who also are residents in our area, wanted to say things. However, Despite that, I have a number of serious concerns, which is the board council I need to bring to this committee. Um, you heard the concerns about new residents. He can't have been in here very long. And he's already very concerned about the density that he's going to be seeing across the road. People are talking of a new Manhattan. You're looking at this here. You can see this here. That is going to be replicated throughout the college. The Peel Centre, which is the, the where the police college is going to look like that. The Beaufort Park looks like that. Gray Park is beginning to look like that. The former on the college site is going to look like that. And that is going to be the future. And at the moment, there is a small road, which will go on to the Edgware Road, which will affect all the residents who live in Edgware, and the rules. And Collindale cannot cope. Now, as I said, um, the Fairview developers have really tried very hard to talk to us about this. But this is, is, has to be seen as a very overdeveloped site. And what this means is that there's a perfect storm happening in Collindale from the second point, which is the issue about affordable housing. Now, why is Collingdale Council my concerns about um, affordable housing? Well, I have residents who live in Collingdale for 12 years every 10th. They see these high-rise buildings going up. They could be evicted at any time, and they cannot move. There are going to be over a 1,000 tenancies where people are going to have to move. They're not going to be even moving into this. So people say they need new housing, but this isn't going to satisfy the needs of Collingdale. As I said, I do find it very difficult talking about this because they really have tried to consult on this. However, I do have to say, as the residents do, they're concerned about this area. The traffic on Collingdale Avenue, one, I have never been able to go from this side to the town hall without driving. It's impossible to go east-west. You can get on a college or tube station and go to Euston. You can't even go to Hyde on it. But it's great if you're travelling from Euston. If you're trying to get to the boroughs, you have to go by car. Otherwise, it takes you 45 minutes and there is no provision for extra public transit. You can go on there now. Thank you. Also, NHS facilities, there's no GP centres, there's 35,000 new people coming. 35,000 new people coming. Sorry, 35,000 new people coming. 
And many, many of people are shift workers who need private transport. They can't afford the, sort of the levels that are here. We need even, there is no east-west route. People want to park for just a minute. The whole bus lane stops with 35,000 people, and I do not know how you're going to go. I'd also like to put into a plea that I'd like to see each developer of these now numerous sites put into the money into a new Collendale Community Fund to help build the community spirit for the new homes that are going to be developed here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Sargent, are you aware that from Collendale you can take the Northern Line down and send it to the boroughs? Yes, I can. But by the time it's taken, yeah. it's actually, it's, I, I, I measure that. And I do, I do take the two to hundred and seventy one from the boroughs. Thank you, uh, Councillor Sargent. I just wanted you to clarify the point about the renters and how it's going to disadvantage them, because surely if this is if more homes are being built, 400 homes being built, for example, it's going to increase the supply in the market of uh, rental properties that are available. And just one other point I wanted to make, in the recent policy resources meeting, there was a document there which talked about um, uh, budgets on, uh, I know there was an over £10 million budget on developing infrastructure for the Collingdale uh, Town Centre, so how would you comment yeah. upon that? Thank you very much indeed, yes. Um, first of all, on the temporary tenants, these are people who would not be, there are only 53 social housing going to be in there. There are already a number of people on the red market stage who are secure tenants who are going to be put into the new red market development. So we're not going to have enough of these over a thousand who are going to be put, they just aren't that number of tenants that are going to be able to um, as Andrew Dismal said, the sort of rents that are going to be charged are nothing like the rent that the temporary tenants are paying at the moment. And as I said, they are very, very worried about what is going to happen to them. I'm, I'm sure that there's more homes that are built than that will put down the pressure on rent and it will make it more affordable. Just that's to mention that we... That's what I've been waiting for, but we, I mean, you know... Yeah, that's that's the That hasn't happened. But because, I, because can I say, there is so much pressure in London mm -hmm. uh, that, that if, if this was just open to Hollander residents, that would be absolutely true, Councillor Shooter. But we are competing with this for the whole of London. And this is why the sort of lower rents that they've been able to have, you know, people can't, can't even afford £80 a week, and they're working. I mean, I have people who are paying £80 a week who are working. They're working as, you know, um, you know helping the community bus service can be. They couldn't afford, they can just about afford the £80. Pounds. These are not going to be £80 pounds a week rent. I, I, I understand that. And I, I, obviously, I think it's a good thing if more ski parties are built around them. But just going back to the affordable, um, it says in 91 affordable housing units. And do you think it's better to at least have 91 rather than nothing? Of course, I'm pleased with it. I mean, I don't like that I said, I, you know, if you have tried, you know, I'm not talking about a callous developer that doesn't care. I'm just saying that the local councillor, my real concern is it's, we are going to be falling college or soon. I mean, the total number of homes aren't going to even meet the needs of the college of residents, never mind the people from London who are desperate for housing as well.
uh, this will be a significant signpost of further inward investments into the Collendale area, which is, uh, which is much needed. Uh, and the Collendale Area Action Plan um, indeed promotes the redevelopment and regeneration of the site for a residential-led mixed-use development, including commercial and community. The scheme, we've worked extremely hard with your officers over the last 15 months to get the detail of this scheme right. The scheme is designed by award-winning architects, John Party Associates. Uh, it includes, uh, the scheme has included significant redesigns to accommodate in particular uh, the majority of car parking and the podium decks, so getting it away from the streets and focusing on the quality of those streets in how they're landscaped and how they present to the pedestrian. This will be a series of buildings of quality and stature, as is right, I think, by the location, prominent location of this site. It will create an attractive, vibrant public space opposite the Condale tube station, and importantly, it will open up the park for the first time. Um, it's a great asset, and I think for many years it's been underutilized. A lot of people don't even know it's there. Um, one of the key drivers of this scheme is to open the park and to integrate it with the design of the development. The scale of the scheme is very much one driven by its context. Where the context is right, the scheme is of, uh, is of some scale, uh, and where it has a more intimate relationship with smaller buildings across the other side of the road, the scale um, turns down. Um, whilst I'm on that subject, the distance between this scheme and the previous speaker's property is 56 metres, 160 foot in old money, uh, and if members wish, I can talk to you more about the sunlight daylight analysis that we've undertaken in relation to the scheme. It's been a very inclusive process, as the previous speakers have acknowledged. We had a public exhibition back at the end of last year. We invited 4,500 people. We had 70 people through the door. Uh, and it's important that I, that I mention that we have worked, uh, we have worked hard with the owners of the adjoining property to ensure that that development of that site is capable, capable of being accessed through my site. Um, the design of that has been uh, has been concluded. And we now have legally enforceable agreements in place that allow both sites to be developed comprehensively and in particular for the Commonwealth Business Centre site to have an access through my site. That is now guaranteed. So in summary, uh, Madam Chair, this proposal will effectively complete the regeneration of the area around the Commonwealth Station. Uh, it's an area that we have referred to in our analysis as the heart of Commonwealth, and that's how we see it. It will deliver a vibrant public realm onto this part of Colindale Avenue, including the park, and deliver very much needed new housing, including affordable housing in a very sustainable location. With your support this evening, it's the intention of my company to commence delivery of this scheme later on this year, and it's my pleasure tonight to commend it to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you, Chairman. Although well, I was going to raise the issue um, that you already have raised, namely you, you said you've done a um, sunlight daylight analysis. Could you, could you go into a little bit more layman's terms of that? Because I, for one, would have a problem uh, with, um, with the people opposite being in uh, darkness. Well, the, the scene, as I'm sure you would expect, has gone through a, a rigorous technical analysis. Um, not just on sunlight daylight, but on all matters of technicalities relating to the development. Specifically on sunlight and daylight, the site has been analysed in accordance with the BRE guidelines, which is the, the industry standard, if you like, for what a scheme should comply with uh, in terms of its impact on its neighbours. Um, the impact on the properties across the other side of Collingdale Avenue, given the distance that this site is away from those properties, is well within the guidelines set by the VRE. So um, whilst the gentleman in his property will be able to see the development on our site, there's a difference between being able to see it and the developer having an unreasonable impact on his property by virtue of loss of light. And what about privacy? So, um, so um, I mean, can I actually take that in short? He will not have his sunlight block. That's right. Thank you. Councillor Barry. Thanks, Councillor Barry. Thank Thank um, sorry, sorry Councillor Barry. I just wanted to ask you about, about uh, affordable housing, particularly affordable rental housing. You've known as the Inviability Study that, that you organised, and uh, clearly our officers feel that Inviability Study is, is robust. So, as we've heard from Lizzie, we're not able to see that, so it's hard for us to judge it. 
So can we talk a bit more about, is this the minimum that your viability study said you could, you could have in, in social housing, or the maximum, or how is it being assessed, and what are the conditions that may uh, persuade you that we may get to out of small social housing? Thank you. Uh, the, the, the officer's advice to you is, is correct, but the detail which sits inside that viability assessment is contains commercial sensitive information, so it's a, it's a common practice for those um, assessments not to be uh, released publicly. But the, the process here is that um, my company submits to your authority a viability um, assessment of the scheme looking to establish the maximum amount of affordable housing that the scheme can generate whilst maintaining a level of commercial return which allows me to satisfy banking governments, to be able to satisfy the commercial requirements of my organisation to be able to start in the place. Now that uh, viability appraisal isn't simply accepted by your officers. They then pass that out for independent scrutiny. And in this instance it's been independently scrutinised by the valuation service. And I have to say, and I deal with many of these across London and on many of the sites, this one has had a very, very good going over that in terms of the robustness of that analysis. So I have to say that um, my company and this authority um, could come to different conclusions in relation to the viability um, findings of the valuation office. They say that 23% affordable housing is the maximum the maximum amount of affordable housing the scheme can, can generate. My conclusions suggest that they are lower than that. So in order to uh, bring this application before you this evening, and in the spirit, um, I would say, of um, my commitment and my company's commitment to the generation of confidence, we have acceded to the 23% requirement. It is by any terms a great deal for this authority. So, are um, you saying that uh, you're a really large company, you have, you have sites all over London? Um, we've heard from Andrew Dismore that it's still a situation in Camden, where viability studies are far more social housing. Uh, and Julius has mentioned about offices in, in Westminster, so it's a different situation there. So, why is it that in Barnet, viability studies show that you can only afford such a very low amount of social housing? Um. I'm unable to help you in terms of other authorities and what they do. But what I can give you is my experience of working with other, other authorities. And all those authorities, including Camden, I've never had the fortune of working in Westminster yet, but I've worked in Camden, and all the authorities take each and every scheme on its, on its merits and on its detail. And the financial analysis of each scheme is unique to that scheme. Now, if there is a, if there is a pattern of um, affordable housing provision that relates to different boroughs. Well, that is essential for those boroughs to account for. My experience is that each application is looked at individually, and it is exactly the same my experience of this authority, as each scheme is looked at on the detail and its merits uh, relating to each scheme. And um, your head of plan, Mr. Carey, on every occasion that I've submitted an application to this authority, has rightly sought a rigorous analysis of the financial appraisal and the maximum amount of affordable housing that the scheme can, uh, can generate. And this situation is exactly that. It's certainly true that all libraries seem to show that we have very good social housing as well. Thank you. 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 One of the points that previous speakers made is to do with parking spaces. I know that you are providing two strategic parking spaces. You take with, I think, about nine point seven per unit, plus three nine five units. Yes. Um, it says here in the report these are for residential units. So if I purchase an apartment in that uh, scheme, would I be entitled to the apartment space? <coughs> or do I have to pay separately as a accommodation? The pricing of the units is is very is very clear. We're very open with purchases at the outset, what's effectively what they're buying. And it goes without saying that the units with a parking space is worth more than one without a parking space. The choice which customers exercise is whether to buy a, a, a unit with a parking space or not. The, um, the amount of parking is, is at point seven, as you say, and that is a, a consistent level of parking which is applied uh, since phase one of the hospital site and that your highways and transportation officers have consistently demanded 
uh, for the developments which, which they conclude is, is right. Uh, clearly isn't one space to go in it. So there is an element of choice and there is an element of restriction of availability on parking, but it is essentially for the customers to decide whether they wish to purchase a car from this place. Yeah, that's a little more question. Thank you for that. I'm not really happy with that answer. Uh, the reason being what you just, if I read it in the line, uh, over 395 units, not every uh, unit will have a parking space. There will be some units will be sold without parking spaces anyway. Uh, you will have 270 units, let's say. Uh, you will price it in such a way that you will charge something extra. They decide not to have the parking space, they're going to buy without the parking space. You're going to have 272 parking spaces, and what is the intention of that? Because I'm not happy uh, in that context because I understand Colindale, I have been in, in, uh, in this area for a long time. I do go for Colindale a lot, and I do criticize with some of the comments the council started making the work on. You'll see from the officer's report that the um, provisions that have related to previous phases on the hospital site regarding um, car parking surveys and the management of the travel plan will apply in a similar way to the site. Um, we are in our second year of parking surveys on the earlier phases. Um, we know that the utilisation percentage is about 60% um, of the parking spaces on one phase, on the early phases of the hospital site. Um, in terms of how that, how that works, this is something that your transportation officers have looked at in some detail. And the um, survey of the parking utilisation, the provisions of the travel allow for all manner of mechanisms to encourage non-car based transport. Um, there's certainly no suggestion of my organisation pricing people out of the market in terms of in terms of car parking spaces, it would be a, a nonsense, frankly, for there to be a demand for the parking spaces and for to have unsold parking spaces. And that certainly hasn't been the experience so far. Um, but I think to try and answer your question, the, the analysis that I've undertaken, and the authority has undertaken independently, doesn't show the sort of scenario that you're perhaps fearing um, may occur here.
question. Oh, yeah, well, it's question. Oh, no, 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 it's comments. It's not a survey work, uh, 
the people moving in and occupying this and whether they have uh, whether the work car owners. And we reduced it down to so I think it was 1.6 by based on actual work car ownership numbers of the park. So we do look at this rigorously. You know, we don't just accept any sort of, and in fact, Fergie will, will say that the car parking does help sell the scheme. This is, this is probably one of the most accessible parts of outer London, you know, sitting on a tube station. So we've got to have regard to that in relation to trying to deliver sustainable transport modes. So we're perfectly satisfied, my highway colleagues are perfectly satisfied that this uh, complies uh, with your, your current policies. On the infrastructure, please. Yes, on the infrastructure, please. Um, the current direct action plan was approved uh, to, uh, about three or four years ago. Um, set out a whole series of, sort of options for site opportunities, development densities, and supporting infrastructure. We weren't going to be delivering all this development without ensuring we have the necessary community and, and, and transport infrastructure. Um, Clearly, this is one site out of many, so that it's being delivered and it will contribute through Section 106 monies and through the community infrastructure levy. And there is a substantial amount of money that's been collected by that means to go towards funding educational needs, uh, and space and recreational needs, and health needs. Okay? That hasn't been forgotten. There are sites that we are still allocating, trying to target to deliver community facilities. Okay. So you can confirm there's going to be a GDP surgery at some point in the future? I, um, I can, I mean, we are working, we are trying to work very closely with NHS um, in trying to locate a new site for, or several new sites for, um, for a, a, a surgery uh, or a medical practice. Um, as you know, there is one at Grain Park, they'll have to be replacement on there when Grain Park comes forward um, uh, in stages. And so, therefore, we have to be working with the NHS now to find that. Now, it's too late to put it on this site, but there are other opportunities uh, that will bring forward, and we will probably, yes, see a medical centre being provided. Um, simply because the you NHS know, is restructuring the way it does things. And clearly, there is growing demand, but it is exceedingly challenging for the NHS to sort of, you know, forecast that, and also, as you can appreciate, find the relevant funds. Yeah. So, uh, but that is, you know, the infrastructure support is absolutely critical in our analysis of the Coldwell operation. Thank you very much. I didn't make a comment on either the chair. Uh, I, I would have not surprised to imagine we were talking about affordable housing. And um, as they had figures of the age, which is basically page 54, a still overall figure of 91, 58 for each other for affordable rents. It's terribly changed recently. Uh, I, 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 I come to that in a second because we made a specific application asking us to change the term from social rent to affordable rent for another application just on the road, which I want to mention. The intermediate, God knows what they're going to cost. Who knows what they cost? And uh, in an area where maybe the, the people who are unemployed or not particularly well paid jobs, the chance of getting into intermediate houses. So I would dismiss that 33. And I have a very good reason for that. When the track page 55, it talks about renew mechanism, the inevitable renew mechanism. All which we do very well. It effectively the same. And if house prices really take off, who are going to go back to you and offer you more affordable houses? But house prices will hardly take have hardly taken off more, Madam Chairman, than they've done recently. And I asked the officers recently, and many many applicants have come back in the last couple of years since we've been doing this, to offer us more affordable because house prices have gone through the roof of the bottom of the Not more than I've said so. But we did. We did, it's a terribly important. We did have a review mechanism for Scarlet. We did have one. And that was from the family application just up the road, which is in the public domain, so I can refer to it. It's the RAF East Camp. They came back to us and they wanted a massive reduction in what we thought of, which we considered affordable housing. So they wanted, they, they, they sort of gambled their food out to us, the remaining 177 affordable houses that were now going to be affordable rent. 
the only complete those if we disregarded utterly the 75 shared ownership houses left to be built and the 208 um, discount market sales houses. So we lost 283, but we thought we were four in the houses. And surprise, surprise, they had the goal to say to us, 80% discount market sales houses, not all credit They had the goal to say, well, our prices were getting them holiday. Our prices were getting them over a pot. 80% is not affordable anymore anyway. So that's the kind of review mechanism we're getting. So I wonder how affordable these intermediate will be here. We lost, but we agreed that plan application. We thought we had a certain number of affordable houses. We lost 283, and that application came to us last year. And this is very relevant to tonight's consideration. The two are interlinked, and there will be a few yards apart. So the house prices down at the newspaper site will be just as high. So 80%, any kind of intermediate housing there, will be unaffordable. Yeah, absolutely. The 58 units that are there may be affordable, but even they are subject to, will be subject to 80% um, uh, commercial rate. So I agree with the other comments about the bulletin size, but really, every news bulletin you turn on from various organizations, housing federation, uh, housing associations, shelter, all kinds of we're all screaming at us about the housing. So here we are, we have this great opportunity to provide really affordable housing. Forget the intermediate, it's not going to be affordable. That's 33 dollars. The 58 might be affordable from some of our pay. And you see, I've got to be for 50 years in case you don't agree with me, and you are on the committee yourself. So, you know, we, we have had one review mechanism, and that is to reduce the number of affordable houses by 283. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Chairman. I make a number one as to the height of the um, application. I think 11 stories is too high, and especially res to the resident that they overlooked their um, house, the light, everything. It's not fair to the residents. Residents always seem to come last when we are thinking about these things. Developers always think that they can do what they want. Well, that's not so. You have to think of the residents that live there and those who will be coming to live there as well. Actually, the first thing we think of, but money seems to be there first and viability and not what viability is, it means more money. The point is, I would like to ask Mr. Cowley, you've got 38 disabled units. How many parking spaces each of the units will have? Also, 
there's so much in here I have missed it, but please forgive me if I got. What about the storage of the surface water excess? You know, we usually have storage of the ground time, etc., etc., for excess storage water, which is up in here as well. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, uh, we can get very technical, but essentially um, this this has to sort of comply with the various sort of regulations uh, that the right agency sets out uh, around surface water runoff, and uh, the layout is carefully sort of constructed to ensure that the that is minimised, and uh, so there will not be sort of that problem that we encounter that I understand exists sort of uh, elsewhere. Um, I'm not sure what call them, might cause that, but we're quite stringent in terms of how you know, these schemes perform in relation to surface water runoff to prevent localised flooding. So these are the narrow conditions covering. So we've got that in here. Yes, that, 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 is, really. that um, is covered now. Right, two more things I want to say. Um, I think. It has been overlooked, not purposely, but without really truly thinking. We have got new residents coming in, plus what's there in the G. Our GPs are overstretched in this borough, and we, we don't seem to put this first and think, well, where are we going to put? What is she to be quiet? I'm speaking, I want the officer to hear what I'm yeah. saying. I would have thought that you would have done that um, before to make sure that new residents come in have a GP to go to. Because they will be, don't wait till they have all these GPs there and they can go there. It doesn't work like that. It overstretch them. And we should be thinking of these things first. But we always seem to think about the, what the developers work want. And I, you know how annoyed I get over that. We must look after our residents as well. Not only think about the money. Money is all right. You can't do without it. But think of your residents as well. Because they have to live there. The developers don't live there. They take the money and run. But the residents haven't got anywhere to run this, so they have to live there. Last point is about the 186. I noticed in the report that you talk about um, there are plenty of buses going along there. Yes, that's true. But with the excess lot of people coming in now, I think you should speak to TFL and tell them you need to review the 186 and the 204. 186 goes from Great Cross right through. And it's not free, it's a long way. So PFL, I know, we don't want to bus. I go on the bus, so I know what I was thinking about. I don't know what I was thinking about. Sorry, Madam Chairman. We got a very Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, Mr. Cowie, will you please speak to PFL? and put that to them because they knew they need to review the 186. I could put another bus in or however they work it out. But it has to be reviewed to court with the amount of people that would be using the service. 204 is not too bad, it gets back quickly. But 186 was a further way. And I'm speaking from experience because I use them. So I know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to understand what uh, part B says, affordable housing review mechanism. Is this an upwards only review if the project is more viable than the actual uh, affordable housing goes up to 40% as opposed to 3%? <laughs> Equipment. So, yes. So in, in that case, I don't think there should be really any concern about affordable housing in this project because it needs the 40%. Okay, thank you. Right. I've never materialised. Right, I'm sorry, I've started to come in for a question and ask a question, so I can finish my comments now. 
Um, I, I'm not against this development completely, but I say fairly good company, I like a lot of what they do, there's no objection to that. But there are ways that could be improved. I don't think as it is now, it's enhancing the area or enhanced by other people who are already dealing in new developments around that and already doing new developments. Um, as I said, this effect is too high and will be the, the whole of the, of the area is developed, including the Neil Centre, which is going to be massively developed, as we've heard, with, with very new infrastructure at the moment of design, and hopefully we will get some more, but you know, we're at the stage of giving plenty, quite, quite detailed plenty of permission to do all this without this infrastructure there to make life livable for families. Um, the height of the blocks, as you know, before, is too high. Now, we've heard that it's a, it's, it's a landmark for one we've heard before. In fact, we heard that it's a landmark for a block for the Hart Hotel, which is yet to go on, and we're going to discuss again tonight, um, on top of the station just across the road. Now, I was on the planning committee that looked at that and agreed to that being a landmark, so it's going to be the only one of that height in that area. If we have another one at the same height just across the road, then it's not going to be a landmark. It's making it into an area of, of skyscrapers. Um, what's going to happen further down the road? What's going to happen on, on the other places being developed? Um, I don't think this is, because it's becoming a Manhattan, I'm not sure about Manhattan, I'm not worried it's going to become a, a Seoul or a Hong Kong selling massive concrete blocks everywhere. So looking at that, reducing that. Social and affordable housing, we've been arguing about this, we've had their comments on that, and I guess we've probably lost the argument on that in this case, but as we continue to make the point that we need to fight for as much as we possibly can, we all know in our walls, at least on this side of, of, of the chamber, we know in our walls, of people who cannot afford to live in the market. We hear statistics coming out every week of people who cannot afford to buy and live in the market. Um, my daughter, my first child, is with me because she can't afford to live anywhere else. I'm sure I'm not the only one here. So, you know, it's, 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 a huge, it's, it's a huge concern that young people in their 30s cannot afford even to rent, let alone to buy anything, yeah. to live where they've got to live where they want. Um, right, now coming back again to Pulse, talking about the viability study and the game, what they're going to have and so on, how to show they can make a commercial game. Have they factored in the game that they made from the increased number of private properties that they built on Pulse? on the site that was reserved for Barnum College, on the site that was reserved for a health centre, which, which are all private properties now. They're very large developments now, private properties. They've made a huge profit from those. That can be factored in and brought over to this site to have more commercial, uh, more, more affordable housing on this site. And my last thing is about the amount of play space. There's a large number of flats here, and this is also an open courtyard that's between the flats. But in here it's talking about actual playgrounds and play space for children, it's talking about just going to build their park, which quite don't see from the plans, you either have to come down your block, walk out of the front, walk around the side through the park to get to. And it's a very small park there, you know, have a lot of children here. Now, that's not going to pay you, not pay you the founder. The assessment of how many children are going to be living on this site is talking about being something like 90, um, which is ridiculous, because it's only up. Just from the affordable rented housing number of bedrooms there, there are going to be more than 90 children just from the affordable rented housing, which we have a very small amount of it. So there are going to be a lot more than 90 children, there's going to be a lot of demand there for more play space. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen. There's going to be children around page, you children around the support, and other uh, social behaviour and everything else. This is part of the infrastructure, it's part of making it a pleasant place for people who are going to be moving in there and people who are already living in the area to do too little place space for the whole of the development and it's, it's an opportunity for making this really something to spend and enhance the area rather than just taking as many units as you possibly can into the space. Now so perhaps you can talk to one quick comment. Well, I did ask, ask whoever's got a mobile phone, I did ask at the beginning if we could turn it on silent. So please could you thank you. Down the desk you've got item 16, which is the site of the Fallingdale Station Plaza, which talks about an 18-story building comprising um, council areas and building to it before I was going to mention it earlier. The point was made about Fletcher Court and objecting to this 11-story line. 
the 80 story is much nearer. Was well, any objection received before this is there or there doesn't seem that it is reflecting here? So I can't understand why they're objecting to 11 story, which is twice, at least two, twice or three times the distance because I was in flight yesterday. Uh, so, 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 I'm just trying to sorry, yes. Jeff, thank you. I'm just trying to understand the point is that building and I don't have any objections to the principal to receive for the eighty story now which is going to be six story higher than this building then so I'm trying to make some sense out of it.